on this episode of Inside the Blueprint. Looking for surveillance solutions? Motobox can help you keep an eye on things. Nobody designs windows and glass that are more resistant to ballistic wind and forced entry threats than InsulGuard security products. Need help getting your house in order? Rubbermaid has a full range of storage and cleaning products to help keep it organized. If you're subject to distractions and lack of privacy in your office space, SnapCab has developed a pod just for you. We're in San Diego, California, visiting Francis Parker School. Established in 1912, it's one of the premier day schools on the West Coast. Due to recent events on school grounds around the nation, Francis Parker chose to upgrade their security surveillance system by hiring an industry leader. When I first came to campus five years ago, we had an outdated video surveillance system. It consisted of about nine cameras, and that system was not functioning particularly well. When I looked at the different options that were available, all roads pointed uh, only to the same manufacturer, and that was Mobotics. Mobotics has always been a company before its time. Uh, we have about 300 employees globally that work for Mobotics, and we have evolved as a company based on the needs of the customers. Mobotics has evolved through the years as an industry leader, high-tech cybersecurity surveillance platform. We like to say Mobotics isn't a camera, it's a computer with a lens. So we have many others like heat detection and sensors for movement and those applications go far beyond the reach of just a surveillance camera. George Honecker is a technical project engineer with Mobotics Corporation. He designed and customized the Mobotics security protocol for Francis Parker School. You know, George, I'm really happy with all of the locations that we put these units. This does a good job picking up all the kids as they walk by. And it also does a good job with the open parts of campus. Yeah, so the fact that it's the hemispheric view, so you catch all the way from one hallway down to the next and everything in between, I think that really helps capture the whole image that we're looking for. Since we are 22 acres and extending into a canyon, we are aware of the need to secure the campus from the canyon, and we understand we can do that through intrusion detection, which is a much more aesthetic option compared to putting up chain link fences. Keeping an open space concept in the campus was a top priority for Francis Parker School. So Mobotics installed 44 surveillance IOT units that can detect motion and alert security within seconds. If we're picking up activity on the campus after that academic day has ended, then we know that that is a true motion triggered interaction. These units also include an emergency button that immediately connects to first responders. The duress button itself has the ability to make logic decisions that we've programmed into it to say what, we, what actions to take. In case of emergency, it's important to have a strategy and Mobotics can provide just that. In the event that there is an incident and there's some sort of emergency and either a student or a staff member has a need to request for additional assistance, they can activate the duress button, in which case the very first step would be that the system itself would actually call out to a first responder or law enforcement and get them moving immediately so that they can be on site within the next 20 to 30 seconds. The next step would be that there is going to be a no notification sent out to key members of the staff, they need to be notified regardless of where they're physically at because they may not be at their desk at the time. So they receive email notifications and text messaging. Next step is that it actually ties into their phone system and their public announcement system to do a mass notification for the entire campus to give a unified message to everyone on the campus. Humans can only do so much, and unfortunately we can't prevent tragedies completely. But there's technologies out there, such as Mobotics, that can help minimize damages and get preventative as far as seeing it before it becomes a tragedy. 
Mobotics is not only an industry leader in surveillance, but it's also a decentralized system that allows cameras to run by themselves. The biggest unique selling point of Mobotics is that we've been decentralized, meaning that when it comes to the camera, you really know the camera can run on itself depending on the application. The total cost of ownership comes into play when you're talking about Mobotics. The fact that Mobotics draws so little power per device makes it more cost effective in the long run. You can install Mobotics in places that have low power uh, and not the infrastructure to run CCTV lines. For example, we've got a camera up on Mount Everest for over 10 years and it was still running. It was fail safe. Adapting to customer needs, Mobotics has become a leading innovator in network camera technology. In terms of what's next for Mobotics, we're very excited about the future. We're embracing the IoT community and we're getting into more behavioral applications that meets the challenges that we see around the world. When the school thinks about our emergency procedures, one of the important things is just having a plan. With Mobotics specifically, we know that we have a partner. What's our main goals? And I would say, as an industry, our main goals always is to make this world a safer place. To learn more about Mobotics Corporation, go to their website, mobotics.com, or go to insidetheblueprint.com to see this portion of the show again. We travel to Enselgard's headquarters in Brighton, Michigan to visit their plant and learn how the company has evolved. Enselgard has been in business for over 40 years. We started out as a bullet resistant manufacturer of doors and windows, and we've evolved over the years to include blast resistance and tornado and hurricane resistant products. We initially were working with banks, credit unions, convenience stores, gas stations, and now have slowly evolved into other applications like utility payment centers, ticket windows for stadiums, and now schools. So with the events that have been happening in the United States, Ansel Guard has product lines catered towards schools. For example, we have bullet resistant entryways and lobbies. We have tornado and hurricane resistant windows and doors for safe rooms for schools. Inselgard gets together with the architects at the inception of the project in order to determine the right product for the design and efficiency of the project. Our goal is to really get involved with the car architect early, to get involved with the design of the project so that when we're involved in the specs, uh, then the glazing contractor can reach out to us for, for the quotation part. Inselgard has been securing uh, people and property for over 40 years. What really sets us apart from our competition is our ability to evolve with the markets that we supply as they evolve. So in the 70s, we provided a fairly limited product offering to a fairly limited market. Since then, obviously the desire, the need to secure people or property from ballistic attack has, has grown. And so we've had to evolve and we've had to expand on our product offering. After 9-11, there was a shift from bullet resistant protection to bullet resistant and blast protection. Buildings trying to protect against blast mitigation. And so we made that shift. Since then, that market has really changed. The International Building Code, the 2015, requires that any new critical facility, which is police stations, fire stations, schools must have a safe room in that new construction. That safe room must occupy all of the occupants of the facility. So what we did is we felt the need to, again, emerge with our market, and so we designed a new system to meet those requirements. The future of Enselgard is very bright, and their response to an increasingly dangerous world is to invest and evolve these protection systems. Today, most of our systems at Inselgard go into the U.S. and Canadian markets. However, we're not going to stop there. So organic growth will take us across the Americas. Acquisition growth could take us around the world. But we believe so heavily in what Inselgard is doing to change people's lives and lifestyles and add a more secure situation. Our office is based in Auburn, Alabama, which is where this project is located and we have a strong resume with school construction and so this one was popular to us uh, as soon as we heard about it. So in around 2008, there was a tornado in Enterprise, Alabama that destroyed a school while it was occupied. Eight students died within that tornado. Our company was actually involved 
in the Build Back, the reconstruction of the school that took place after that. The state of Alabama enacted a building code that said that every school under construction from that point on had to include a storm shelter that was big enough to accommodate the entire school. Well, there's many applications that can be done with the FEMAs. I mean, we've seen them in the past where it's just aluminum storefront windows with the shutters behind it. And, you know, now they've developed a window that is exposed with no shutters required that basically meet all the codes, meet the 2014 IBC and the uh, FEMA 360 one in 2015. It obviously gives daylight for the kids to be able to see in and out of the classrooms at all time and not feel like they're in a box. Mother Nature will always present hazards for people, but InsulGuard will be there to help prevent tragedies through innovation and preparation. So the debris impact testing to meet ICC 500 2014 consists of a 15 pound two by four at 100 miles an hour. And the result needs to be complete safety. Uh, no glass shattering to the interior, the glass needs to stay in the frame, and the frame needs to stay in the opening. And that's a requirement of ICC 500 2014 to be used in safe rooms. The benefits of these type windows are that they're aesthetically pleasing, they match the rest of the architecture for the school, as well as providing a safe place for the students. The biggest positive impact for InsulGuard is, is we aren't just in the active shooter environment. My distribution career started in Oklahoma, and I remember having to live through some tornado type situations, and you can't prepare for these things. So people can quickly understand a, a school needing to be kept safer, but also the idea that Mother Nature will also create some hazards for people, and the things that we can do at InsulGuard, I think, prevents and keeps folks from having to have some tragic situations when they couldn't really have time to prepare. RCP, better known as Rubbermaid Commercial Products, has been designing and manufacturing the most effective and durable commercial sanitation products since 1968. From trash containers to a mop bucket that reduces splashing, durability and productivity have worked as key ingredients in the innovation behind the product's design. We're heading to Rubbermaid's headquarters in Huntersville, North Carolina to meet the team behind the world's toughest cleaning products. When I think about quality, I think about it from our consumer's perspective. And when you just see the name Rubbermaid, uh, what initially pops in their mind is the word durability. We have a storied history of innovative product design. In 1974, RCP came up with the first resin uh, mop bucket. At that time, the advantages of that over the traditional metal bucket were that it's a, a lot lighter and it's a lot more maneuverable when you push it across the floor. So we put a lot of time up front in simulating how we're going to ensure the product quality before the design is even finished. So we do it in our computer-aided design simulation tools. We're also taking our product and go evaluate it in the test lab to make sure it meets all the standards, and then we get approval by quality to go into production. So what is it about these innovative designs that keeps RCP at the top of the industry? We're always trying to find ways to test our extreme durability. So recently, my team came up with this crazy idea to drop a 4,000 pound car on top of a brute container, just to see how indestructible it actually is. And of course, there was some crushing, but no denting, and uh, literally just popped it back into its original shape. Now that we've had a taste of the imagination behind these superhero products, it's time to see what they're made of. Welcome to Winchester, Virginia, the original birthplace of Rubbermaid products. Home to RCP's manufacturing and distribution, along with several other locations spread all over the U.S., totaling a whopping 3.9 million square feet of manufacturing space. So in this facility, we've broken it down into several different product families. Two product families that I'm really excited about is the Brute and the Wave Break. The Brute, we make several different size containers. Uh, these are cans that you probably have at your house or your neighbor have at their house where they put their garbage in. So let's go have some fun and let's go take a look at the process in person. 
now we're going to meet Bill Sharrier. Bill is my engineering manager uh, for this facility. He's going to take you through the rest of the process on how the brood is manufactured here at the facility. Bill, she's all yours. All right, thank you very much. Welcome to the brood cell. Uh, let's go take a look at the injection process and see how the brutes are made. So each year we go through about 130 million pounds of resin. It's delivered here by rail car, pumped into outside silos, and a pumping system conveys it to the machines like the ones behind me. So an injection machine has two halves. An injection half that has the screw and barrel. Resin comes in in a pelletized form, goes in, it gets pushed forward through the screw that's inside the barrel, it melts, and on this machine, there's a mold in the clamp half that has two halves. It fills that void between the two, that's the shape of a 44 gallon brute. It cools, and when it's ready and solid, it opens up. Here, one comes out every 49 seconds or so. For our 50th anniversary, we actually held a contest to find the oldest brute that's still out there in the field in use. Within two weeks, we had hundreds of entries, and we actually found the winner, and it was somebody that had had the brute container that's still in use uh, from 1968, so 49 years and still going strong. It is amazing that we sell 2.8 million of these a year because they are virtually indestructible. They go through a variety of testing, uh, take them to the extremes of environment. And we test it literally by freezing these things at minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit and dropping them from a height of six feet 100 times. We also lift them 5,000 times by the handles uh, with full, a weight full of water. We put uh, weight inside of them and we drag them on a piece of sandpaper for 10 miles or so just to show that they don't wear out as you drag it to the end of your driveway each morning. So here we are at our distribution facility in Winchester and behind me you see bustling activity shipping millions of dollars of product each day to customers around the world. Uh, you name it, you can find our product in airports, hotels and, and your kitchen as well. I was in a hotel recently and saw a 95 pound housekeeper and she had in Rubbermaid Commercial Products hospitality cart. And it really hit me that what we're doing can make a difference. On a daily basis, she's pushing over 350 pounds of supplies, seven, eight hours a day. And I think about the improvements that we've made to that cart, you know, even in the last two years. And to us, if we've done that right, we've done our job. We really want to make the users of our products' lives easier and safer. From mop buckets that you'll see in a school cafeteria, to cleaning carts that you'll see in a hotel, to brute trash cans that you'll see on a construction site. And so when we build products and we innovate and we think about those products and how they're going to be used, we design that into our products. We're also very proud of the fact that we're making so much of this product here in the United States, uh, which provides uh, to the local economy and also to the economy throughout the United States. Looking to keep your commercial space clean with a variety of innovative, durable products? Head over to RubbermaidCommercial.com. Where does innovation come from? More often than not, it usually stems from a need or a problem that requires a solution. This is what inspires the engineers, technicians, and construction personnel at SnapCab. Having conquered the worlds of elevator interiors and multimedia walls, they've set their sights on the open workspace environment where privacy is hard to come by. And the SnapCab pod can provide a solution. And as much as the folks at SnapCab pride themselves on innovation, it might be their focus on simplification that sets them apart from the competition. Hi, I'm Glenn Bostock, CEO and founder of SnapCab. In 1983, we started a woodworking shop in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Myself and some other college buddies rented a barn and we started building custom cabinet work. Pretty soon, we outgrew the barn and we came up with a systematic way to remodel elevators. It reduced the installation time for elevator mechanics from four days down to one day. In 2016, we were approached by a major open office company looking for a way to bring privacy into their open office. They were looking at our elevator cabs and realized, hey, you guys very nearly have a phone booth here. If only you could just panel the outside and put some doors on these things. Apparently there's a privacy crisis with all these open offices. 
people can't think or focus. They need small conference rooms where they can collaborate and have a private conversation. So it took one year to develop the prototype. We went to market and we actually won an award at Neocon for, for best of show in that category. All right, here's where the action happens, out on the factory floor. And this is also where I keep my office. But before this turns into a pod, a lot of work has to happen to it. And we're gonna take you through the whole manufacturing process. And here we have Kyle, my production manager, and he's gonna take you around. Kyle. Thanks, Glenn. All right, thanks. Show you how we make the pod. Welcome to the first stage of pod manufacturing, panel production. What we do first is we place large sheets of flake into our glue and press machine and press them with any type of laminate that you might see on the outside of a pod. Once the panels are pressed, they get cut to size on the beam saw. Once the panels are cut to size, they're then placed through the shaping and drilling machine. So once the panels are completed, then the glass door is hinged and brought to the final assembly cell, where the pod is fully assembled. Once the pod is finished assembly, it's then brought over to the packaging cell where it's wrapped for packing. You thought that orbital wrapper was cool? We'll now check out our robo wrapper, Pac-Man. My favorite thing is how we actually build a pot that has a panel on the outside and one in the inside. You can hang anything you want, you can put anything in there. You can personalize and customize it as much as you want. We have people installing monitors, projectors, anything. The pot is the only pot uh, in the industry that actually is in casters and wheels. It makes it super easy for you to just put it in place and start using it. My name is Corinna Mossberg. I am the president of SnapCap. I used to work for one of the major elevator companies where SnapCap was a fantastic supplier. We're always promoting being kind, being authentic, being useful, and creating value for others, whether it be customers, employees, or any other stakeholders. The executives at Brandstar, the production company behind Inside the Blueprint, were so blown away by the pods, they ordered one for themselves. Karen, let's see you again. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing? Again? Hey, as promised, here is your SnapCab Pod, yeah. but this is not what you ordered. Okay. This is SnapCab Pod 2.0. Oh, wow. This has all kinds of features that are just coming out on the market now. Nice. Well, you know what? I want to dedicate this pod to one of my special producers. I'm going to have her come down and take a look at nice. it. Nice. Can you come down for a second? I want to show you something. Sure, I'll be right down. I know you've been working really, really hard, and I know sometimes you need some privacy to be on phone calls and stuff, so we got this great new snap cab that is gonna be dedicated to you. For me? So it's gonna be Britney's <laughs> pod. Oh my God, that's incredible. Yes. Come on in, let's check it out. Incredible. Oh my God, oh, that's where Scooby's been. This is amazing. It's nice, right? It's really nice. This pod has corning glass on the whiteboard. Also, there's acoustic sound absorbing panels. And check out this door. This has a triple seal that really blocks the sound. So what gets me up in the morning is really working with the team that I work with. We have people that love working together, collaborating, to use our God-given talents to do something useful to benefit other people. And I feel like my time is really well spent here at SnapCap. For more information about the SnapCab pod, please visit us at snapcab.com. Thanks for watching this episode of Inside the Blueprint. For more information on anything you saw today or to find out how you can become part of the show, go to insidetheblueprint.com.